So good morning from Sao Paulo. We had a bit of a late night last night singing karaoke with friends, but it's our last day in the city, so we need to go out and sightsee. Um, so we're starting off the morning with a traditional breakfast. So if you have a look down here, we just ordered coffee, coffee with milk, pretty simple. I've also got my pau de queijo. And, and that's a is, big one. That's a massive one. So <laughs> this is the, the cheese bread made with the manioc flour. Yes. And yeah. here comes the other part. This is the bread that has been cooked in butter, right? It's like the toast. Okay, so can you tell us how is pau na chapa made? Yeah, so basically, to keep it really simple here in Brazil, which is kind of cool, it's just your bread cooked on a pan with butter. Yeah. So it's really simple, but it looks really tasty. Yeah. But it's so nice and buttery, and like the bread is flaky, it's like a French bread. They must put a lot of butter on there. Yeah, that's really nice. But you know what? I do wish they had a bit of jam. Like this bread with a bit of strawberry jam would just be you know magic. I would put cream cheese on mine. Cream cheese? With a dollop of strawberry jam on top. Ooh. Now that's the winning combo. Look at that, it's so cheesy inside. This is amazing. Because you know what? We've been going to a place called um, Casa do Pau de Queijo, and over there, you get like these tiny little balls. They're just like bite sized. But this is like a proper that's, ginormous. That's Pau the de granddaddy queijo. of them all. That's, that's bigger than our hands. Yeah, and like, see if you can get the texture of this. Like, just look at that. Oh, yeah. It's so cheesy. Oh. How's that? That's good. Perfecto? That's the stuff. That's authentic. Yeah. It's like really chewy because of all the cheese in there. Nice and starchy. It's good stuff. This is what I'm going to miss when we leave tonight. Alright, time to try the coffee. Wow. It's really sweet, isn't it? Really, really sweet. There's a yeah. ton of sugar added. <laughs> I like it. I'm loving the coffee. Yeah, I, here. I like it too. I usually have my coffee black, but this is a this is a nice jolt of energy in the morning. Yeah. It tastes more like a dessert coffee. Mm -hmm. And now this is completely unrelated to breakfast, but you I saw cocada. I saw the cocada, and this is like our favorite coconut slash snack slash dessert. And it's basically just coconut and, and a sugar. Whole bunch of sugar and maybe a little bit of milk. Look at this thing in beauty. It's like a coconut bar. Oh man. That is so good. It has nothing to do with breakfast, but yeah. I'm already eating sweets for breakfast. <laughs> You just couldn't resist. It's your last day in Sao Paulo. You may as well enjoy it. <laughs> so we just paid the bill and Sam is over the moon because that was amazing value. Such cheap. It was 16.25 reales, which is like it's less than five dollars. Yeah. All that food and I got an extra coffee. Look at this. I mean we had three coffees. Yeah. We had the two basically the two pastries. The, the two breads? Two breads and then we had the cocado. So that's amazing. Like, I'm full, I'm ready to go, I'm on a sugar high. Let's get the day started. Woohoo! Woo let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it is our very first lunch here in Rio de Janeiro, so we thought let's go for the classic grill. We are eating at a churrascaria, and I'm probably making that sound a little bit more Spanish than Portuguese, but basically it's a grill house and you just eat steaks and meats and the waiters are going to be coming around to the table with like these giant rotisserie sticks and they just basically slice the meat onto your plate so pretty cool we're paying a fixed fee a flat rate and that also gives us access to a salad bar and we get sides and free non-alcoholic drinks so we're gonna be eating lots of food today basically <laughs> sounds good to me salad bar and all the meat you can get here we are also able to choose a few sides so we can try what are we gonna pick good question how about fried manioc flour Do yeah you want a bit of that I'm up for anything and you like fried bananas yes so let's go for some of that 
Okay, so first up, the salads. Yeah, so take a look here at my plate, mm -hmm. and you'll see that I've got a whole bunch of different assorted salads. A lot of them have mango, which is really exciting. Some of them have cheese. I, th I see some, looks quinoa, like to be some quinoa. Brown rice. Brown rice, so super healthy. Yeah. And I'm trying not to load up on too much of those <laughs> because the star of the meal will be arriving soon, and that's the shaved meat. Get served. So the meat has already arrived, and I think we're starting with chicken. Uh -huh. So let's let's take a look at this one. And I can tell already that this is this has been uh, has a, like a sweet glaze or something yeah, over top of it. Because so I can good. smell it smells a bit like the honey. A bit like sugar. If only we had smell a vision. If only I smell. Sorry guys, Sorry you're missing that. out here. Future technology. Wow. 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 Super tender meat. Yeah. And it's been, it's like kind of like honey glaze coating over top of it. Yeah, it seems to have crunchy. been marinated. I tried yeah, it too. Yeah. It's so good. Oh. And you also got sausage on your plate. A little oh. bit of chorizo. Super tasty. Want to go for that? Yeah, why not? Cut us a piece. The mini chorizo Ooh. section. Oh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Nice and pink. He's in the Wow, that's almost as good as the Argentinian stuff. Oh, almost. So I think this is quite clever. At the table, they leave these little cards, and basically you can flip it if you're full and you no longer want any meat. You just show the red side, and then if you do want more meat, you show the green side, and you just leave it like that. And the waiter comes around, and he just keeps bringing you different cuts. So. so we're nowhere close to tapping out yet. We've just started. We've just this begun. has just begun. Alright, time to try the meat. Start of the meal. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah? Yeah. Nice really tender. tender. Nice and tender, and also really salty. You can tell they've added a lot of salt, but not a lot of other uh, like seasonings or anything else. It's very simple, very simple, like keeping it in a little salt. Nicely cooked too, it's a little yeah. bit pink in the middle. That's cool, that way the flavor of the meat can really shine through. Exactly. And let's talk about our sides that have arrived. We have our fried plantain, which mm -hmm. you are a huge fan of. Mm -hmm. And we also have the farofa, which is the fried manioc flour. So you want to try that for the first time? Yeah. So you just, you just bite into it? Is that how you eat it? Well, try not to choke on it. I think you're supposed to mix it in with like your rice or your beans. On its own, it's probably not that spectacular. <laughs> no, it definitely needs to be added to something. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that golden plantain right there. You know, I'm so excited to try this. I really got hooked on these when we were in the Peruvian jungle nearby mm -hmm. Iquitos. And so to have it again here in Brazil is a real treat. Yeah. And actually fried banana or fried plantain is a popular dessert in Asia. So we ate it quite a bit over there as well. And this is awesome. Like this is the way I like it. Mm -hmm. Really, really sweet, really ripe. And it's almost a syrupy on the outside. It's just, it's wonderful. <laughs> around with me probably like five or six times give us a status update oh, how status. are you feeling status update is I'm feeling very satisfied in terms of the taste and man am I ever getting stuff that I think I've hit my quota it's time to flip over to the red card is this picana okay Sam get one yeah. oh, obrigado. So this one is Migana. Let's let's just dig into that. Oh my gosh, like I already said I was full and it keeps coming. Yeah. It's amazing though. Ooh. It's too good not to eat it. That's so juicy inside. Oh, look at that. Look how red oh. that is. Oh. Oh, that's the best one, yeah. Yeah, best cut so far. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, try the picana when it comes around. <laughs> the filet mignon. There it is. Because we don't get enough meat. Major meat sweats happening right now, I, I, Sam. I swear, by the time I've done this, this is, probably will be the last meal of the day. 
and I'm thinking I may need to fast tomorrow. This is, this is getting to the very advanced stages of a pig out. So I believe that is a meal you're going to remember for a long time, <laughs> yes. wouldn't you say? A very long time. Yeah, it was like fantastic. It was just the quality of the meat was so good and the service was so attentive. They kept checking up on us to see if we had enough meat, to see if we had enough of our mains. And also the salad bar was really cool. There's a lot of really inventive salads. So this mm -hmm. overall was like just an absolutely fantastic meal. And let's talk about the price now. And the price was also really reasonable. So it came to 79 reals. So you're looking at just roughly over 20 US dollars, about I think 22 US dollars for that mm -hmm. meal. And that included all of the meat, all of the salad and the drinks as well. So really good meal. I mean, that was the equivalent. I probably ate the equivalent of four meals just here now. So it's time for a rest. I'm just beyond stuff. Yeah. And here's a tip. Have a small breakfast yeah. if you're planning to come here. Or even skip it. I haven't seen a sandwich that big since we've had had it from Katz's in, in New York City. Do you remember yeah, the pastrami yeah, sandwiches we had there? Amazing. amazing. And this place, it's called Coca Bar. I think I'm pronouncing that right in Portuguese. Coca, Coca. So yeah, there's a huge line here. The place is packed. And we've ordered the sandwich that's called Bellissima. So if you have a look here again, it is thick, thick amounts of mortadella some melted cheddar cheese and also sun-dried tomatoes in there and like a, a fluffy white bun like French bread oh you know what <laughs> that's gonna be hard to bite into oh. all right time to tackle this okay so let's try and dip it into this spicy pepper sauce like this is so gooey and greasy oh, oh look at the cheese look at the cheese Wow. Crazy. So good. <laughs> yeah? So good. Also, their sauce is quite spicy. It's a lot spicier than I was expecting, so I'm like, Woo! Burning. Your tongue's on fire. It's just so juicy. I know I keep saying this, but look at that. It's like oozing juice and grease, and it's just the bread is sopping it all up. Oh. <laughs> My gosh, one more bite and then I'll share. Are you ready for this? I'm ready! So, let's so I'm gonna try it. a little bit of the sauce too. Oh, big Whoa. bite, big bite. Whoa. <laughs> I got more so sauce on the side of my mouth than I did inside of my mouth. <laughs> but, but how's right. the sandwich? You're right. Delicious. Like just such massive amounts of meat. Yeah. Like the only, like I said, the only other place that I've had this much meat has been in Patches in New York and Schwartz's in Montreal. So now we found a third place in the world that serves meat like this. Yeah. Incredible. Here in Sao Paulo, have another bite. And you're right, that that sauce is, is ridiculously spicy. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going for one without the sauce this time. Oh man. That is so good. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but like there is juice dripping down from this meat. Yes. Look yes, at this. there is. Look at this. <laughs> That's awesome. That's one heck of a sandwich. Well, as usual, we took care of that. 
How are you feeling? That was a greasy feast for the ages. I am feeling stuffed. One sandwich is totally enough for two people. Yeah. If you can finish a whole sandwich, you're either ridiculously hungry or you're you're a bit of a pig, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> all right, and price-wise, this was just under $9. Yeah. $9 so I'd say dollars. pretty good value for two well, people to have lunch. 30-something reals, so yeah, really good value. And bring a friend. <laughs> bring a friend. Bring a friend. That is the number one thing. Colombo and this place is considered one of the 10 most beautiful cafes in the whole world and if you just take a look around me it's kind of like a French Belle Epoque style with Art Nouveau they have these huge mirrors that came all the way from Belgium and it just feels like you've traveled back in time here also they've had a lot of really distinguished guests like kings queens presidents so I yes. do feel Special here. Queen Elizabeth has come here and apparently almost all of the Brazilian presidents have yeah. have frequented here at some point Pretty in time. Popular spot. Indeed. So what mint. you chose mint? I chose mint. I'm all about the green tea. That's that's perfect because we're having so much chocolate, the mint will go very well with that. popular Brazilian dessert known as Brigadeiro and this is the classic form right here so I was asking our waiter about it and he basically said it's milk and chocolate kind of like cooked over very very low heat and then you let it cool down and harden and then you basically scoop it up with a spoon make it into little balls and then you roll it in, in chocolate sprinkles that you can see over here so that looks super decadent to me. So, so friends, this is for chocolate lovers. Oh yes. So I'm going to dig right in. Oh, look at that. It's almost like a thick fudge. Like, I don't know if you can see the detail here, how I pulled it out, but it's so, so thick. Man. Mm. Wow. Decadent. Oh my it's almost like peanut butter, like that same texture, but it's all chocolate. I can see why they give you a very small amount of it, so it's just like, you need to chew it slowly and savory, but mm, so good. Is it really sweet too? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. So it is now Sam's turn to have his first bite of Brigadeiro. Yes, and I am so excited to try this. Like, I've hardly had any kind of Brazilian food in my life before. So everything that we're eating is new. new food videos are completely new. And yeah, like, I mean, it's even, it's even heavy in the fork. Yeah. It's so thick. I know. What do you think? You're right, it, it is thick like peanut butter. It's almost yeah. thick in the same sense, like, almost a little bit like fudge too. Yeah. And it's extremely decadent. It's so rich and chocolatey and creamy. Like, it's amazing. Like, we're gonna have so much fun eating all three <laughs> of these different things. <laughs> So aside from the chocolate one, we also ordered a brigadeiro made out of coffee. So this looks a little bit different. Yeah, so I've already cut it up here and it has a totally different consistency. Mm -hmm. The chocolate one is a bit more like kind of like peanut butter, more like a spread. Yeah, it's smoother. Yeah, but this one here is crumbly. Ooh, so. let's have a taste of that. flavor doesn't hit you until you've been chewing it for a few bites. Yeah. And then wow, it's just like so potent. And so I also flavorful. noticed that it has a shredded coconut on the exterior. Yeah, it does. That looks and pretty good. Like the other one, it's really dense and really filling. Yeah. Like these balls look small, but I'm sure that if you finish a whole one, you're going to be pretty stuffed afterwards. So do you have a preference, chocolate or coffee? Which is better? 
No, I don't have a preference. <laughs> I like them equally. I, what I want to do is alternate between the two of them. That's, One bite of each. That's the plan. So aside from ordering brigadeiro, we also got the brigadeiro cake. So if you take a look here, this is kind of like a, a chocolate cake with three layers. That's three layers of cake right there. And we've got the brigadeiro cream kind of like spread in between and chocolate sprinkles on the side. Can't forget the sprinkles. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's like a very fluffy yet moist chocolate cake. And the brigadeiro spread is also a lot creamier. It's not so thick. Yeah, that's a really nice combination. So like pretty much best chocolate cake ever? Yeah. Almost. You can't go wrong with this. <laughs> mm. Look at that thing of beauty. Yeah, Look seriously. Look at that. So I would say we're leaving this place beyond satisfied. We couldn't even finish the chocolate cake. No, defeated by the chocolate cake. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about price point for this meal. It was actually pretty good, right? Yeah, good so value. It came to 46 reals, which is about roughly 13 US dollars. So yeah, that was decent. We got three three different desserts. Yeah. And we also got tea as well. Tea for two. So not bad at all. So definitely recommend coming here. I mean, you're going to come here for the decor and the awesome environment, but you're going to leave really satisfied by the taste of the desserts as well too. winding down like today is literally our last night in the city but there's still one more food we wanted to try and that is Pao de Queijo. Voila! So of course we had to go to Casa do Pao de Queijo and that means the house of the cheese bread and over there they specialize in these little like bread cheese balls and they are amazing. I used to eat these as a kid when I used to visit family and they are so, so good. This is like my favorite Brazilian. I know, food. they're super tasty and you can find them almost everywhere. I mean, this is embarrassing to admit, but we've even had them at McDonald's, McDonald's here. For breakfast, you can get <laughs> <laughs> So let's just dig right in. I'm gonna grab one of these. So I have to admit, these are best when they're like fresh out of the oven. And we've had these in our apartment for a few hours now. They're not warm anymore, but they're still a little bit gooey inside. I mean, it's getting kind of dark here, so I don't know if you can see that, but it's like really cheesy and ooey and gooey and just oh so good. Mmm. 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 So the key ingredient for these palos de queijo is the cassava flour. Yes. That's what makes it sticky inside. And then of course the cheese too. Ooh. Mm. Aren't they so good? Oh, you can just eat like, eat them by the tens. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? If you want to make these back at home, you can actually pick up a bag at the supermarket of the powder and you mix it yourself. We have to do that. Yeah, definitely. So Sam is washing the pao de queijo down with guarana. And what is guarana? It is like the most popular soft drink here in Brazil. Yeah. It kind of tastes a little bit like ginger ale, not mm -hmm. as much bite as ginger ale, but it's a little bit sweeter. That's that's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, and apparently it comes from the maple family. So I think that's the reason of why we enjoy it so much yeah. being Canadian. There you go. <laughs> Right, and we've got a massive one over here. Yes. So aside from specializing in cheese bread, you can also get sweet ones. And this one is filled with doce de leite. I know I'm butchering it every time my Portuguese is awful, but this is like the dulce de leche filling. And if you can have a look at the bottom of the bread, there's a little hole and that's where they filled it with that ooey gooey caramel. So what do you think? Should I bite into it? Or yeah, but don't it take don't take too much because don't you you know what? Much. I want a lot of that too. That's my biggest concern here is that I'm not going to be left with much. Mmm. Look at that. Can you see the filling oh, in there? Oh yeah, yeah. There Sque it is. Squeeze it some more. Squeeze it around a bit. Mm. Oh oh wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. It's seeping up from the side. So how is it? 
It's really good. Obviously, it doesn't taste like cheese, but it's still made with the cassava flour. So it's kind of got that like chewy, starchy consistency. So this is your dessert really nice. after you have the cheese ones, right? Mm, look at that. Look at that. Oh! Don't you dare have any more without me. Half and half. Half and half. Oh, oh this is going to be so good. Here you go. Before it's gone. And this is kind of a random item, totally unrelated to bread, but Sam saw it at the store. Saw it while we were checking out, while we were paying for the bill. I'm like, you know what? I've never had a bananada. Bananada. Okay. So I'm guessing it is some kind of a banana candy. Oh, yeah. wow. That is really thick. Look at that. Ooh. Coated in something. Wait, I've had this before. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Oh. Super sweet. Yeah. And now it, it's like condensed banana. Yeah, it's like it it, it, made, it reminds me kind of like a burnt banana with sugar. Yeah. And like turned into a candy oh, man, that's sort delicious. of. It kind of reminds me of the plantain we were having, uh, you know, up north in the jungle. Mm. Except it's even more more like candy than that. Wow. Mmm. Mm -mm, good. good. So bye bye cheese bread, it's all gone. All gone. So these exact ones here cost 12 reales and I think the dessert one with uh, dolce de leche and the bananada brought it up to 20 reales. So you're talking about, that's that's probably like six, seven US dollars at most. Mm -hmm. so not For bad. some of the best bread you'll ever try. Yes, and we're both quite full after that, so you can turn it into a snack slash meal. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You've got some little crumbs on your mouth. <laughs> So today's lunch video is going to be all about black beans. We are at a place that specializes in feijoada and that's kind of like a black bean stew. So everything we're going to be trying here from the appetizers to the mains is going to have black beans in some component. And this is something that you really find a lot in Brazilian cuisine so looking forward to sampling that. So for the appetizer here we have a feijoada soup. So basically a black bean soup that you drink out of a cup. Never tried this before. It's kind of an exciting moment. <laughs> <laughs> beans! Beans are exciting! Mm. Oh wow. Yeah, is it a warm soup or a cold soup? How is it served? It's warm. It's not like piping hot, but yeah. it is warm. Mm -hmm. It's really thick and it's, it's very salty and flavorful. Ooh. I quite like it to be honest. Is it just beans or does it have any chunks of meat? Um, no, I think it just, it's just beans. Just beans. Taste. We're drinking beans, guys. The food is here and we have a nice selection. Just have a look. Lots of different pots and things happening. So I'm just going to serve myself. Wow, that's a lot of food. Yeah, so we're going to start with a base of white rice that I just spilled all over the table. <laughs> But white rice is one of those things that is never missing at the table when you're in a Brazilian home. And on top of that, I'm gonna put my feijão, which is the, the black beans. Black beans on its own. Ooh, that looks and good. in the next one here, you have the feijoada, which is the black beans and the meat. So this is like a bean and meat stew, and it has different cuts. And it's a mix of pork and beef. So I'll grab some sausage. Let's start with that. And that looks see. good. Oh, there's more over here. So I'm gonna grab some manioc. Yep. I think that's the English name for it. Some greens. And then over here we have, what's this one? Ooh, okay. So the powder is farofa, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a, a manioc flour. So you want to be careful with this because it's really easy to choke on. You know on. what? I think that's the one I tried on, on yeah. its own and I didn't enjoy that yeah. much. But on I think it's, it's going to be pretty good with beans. It's very dry. Um, yeah, and this apparently is, is fried pork skin. I think that's what I understood, so... Looks like a puff cracker. It does. I've never tried fried pork skin. Not sure I'm going to like it, but let's get started, shall we? So you're getting a little bit of everything there, a huh? A little bit of everything. I almost feel like I should be eating this with a spoon. I feel like it's gonna be messy. Mmm. That's quite good. I like that. 
like ingredients themselves are very simple i mean rice and beans super easy to make super cheap so yeah and i kind of like it with the with the pretto on top so it gives it kind of like a nutty flavor and it adds a bit of texture to it also yeah pleasantly surprised it's been a while since i ate this so i'm enjoying it familiar flavor so it is now Sam's turn. Time to dig in. Yeah, time to try it for the first time. So I've got the meat here, I've mm -hmm. got the beans, and I'm gonna make sure I get a bit of the rice too. Yeah. Try to, time to try that feijoada. <laughs> the big piece of meat. Yeah. Yeah. It's well. Good. It's good. Yeah. I, it's it's very salty and it does have a lot of flavor considering that it is just a bean dish. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really high quality beans, a lot better than most of the types of beans I would eat back home in Canada, for example. A lot yeah. more flavorful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's simple food and it's tasty. I can see why it's popular here. We should also mention that we kind of tried to play it safe with, with the meat in our feijoada yeah. because on the menu we saw they had like pig ears and pig feet and mm -hmm intestines and just different cuts yeah we we, we could so. have we could have gone all out but we played it safe today <laughs> yeah we were like um we have a flight tomorrow maybe so. just beef and sausage will yeah. do mm. so that looks like a nice cut of beef there yeah Ooh, nice and pink that's really good that yeah. kind of tastes like a roast beef yeah yeah i like that a lot okay so now it's time for the fried <laughs> pork skin Going in for the fried pork skin, and it looks yeah. really crunchy. Oh wow, look at that. I mean, I just got it all over my fingers. Mm. So if no one had told you this is pork skin, what you know would you what? think it is? I've had something similar to this that was a prawn cracker. Okay. You know what, it's quite tasty. It's it's very salty. It's almost like, it's almost like eating a potato chip almost. Mm. Yeah, it's Let's good. get a closer look at it. Let's see the texture. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. Ooh. Not bad. Get over there. Okay, so now I'm trying something that's called manioc. And it kind of looks like a golden potato, but the texture, it's more like a root. Like it's quite fibrous. Is it kind of like yuca? It's similar to yuca, yeah. It's like really starchy. Is that good? It's nice, yeah. It goes nice with the beans, with the bean sauce. The fish out. Mm. Okay, so this right here is Brazil's national dish. So what can you tell us? Sam. <laughs> yes, but it did originate from Portugal. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool is you can find variations of this dish in former Portuguese colonies. Yeah. Such as Macau and... Goa, India. Yes. Mozambique. Goa, Mozambique. So travel around and try out the variations. Yeah, eat feijoada around the world. Dessert has arrived. The dessert is here. Well, Sam is going to love this. So this one is doce de leche. And I'm probably butchering the name, but that's Portuguese for dulce de leche. There it is. Oh, wow. It's so nice to just eat it on its own. Like, it's just great on ice cream, bananas, cakes, but even on its own, like just on the spoon, it works perfectly. And what are the other two? Mm. Okay, so this one, the dark one, is made out of banana. So let's try that. I've never had this one before. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like caramelized bananas. It almost tastes, tastes a bit like a jam. I think I'm gonna like that one a yeah. lot. And this one. The last but not least. This one I asked, but he said the name in Portuguese really quickly and I couldn't understand it. <laughs> so this it is was mystery. Mystery. <laughs> mystery number three. Mm. Is it if pumpkin? I had to guess, Oh, well, maybe pumpkin. I was gonna say sweet potato. Okay. It could be one of the two. One of the two. Why don't you try it and you tell me? So time to try the mystery dessert. The mystery. What could it be? Pumpkin or sweet potato? That's the question. The million dollar you know question. What? I think it I, I don't know if it's if it's pumpkin or sweet potato, but it definitely has cinnamon. 
definitely Ooh. has cinnamon. So that's what I've been able to ascertain. <laughs> <laughs> detective skills, yeah. foodie detective. Okay, so the meal has come to its conclusion. We have finished everything in front of us, just about. That was a lot of food. Especially it was. The, the dessert was like the knockout blow. Yeah. <laughs> it was the uppercut. Ready for siesta. Yeah, basically. So what did you think of your first feijoada? Yeah, I, I actually really liked it. It's you know simple food simple ingredients but it's quite tasty and it's, it's filling too mm -hmm. I did like it I would eat it again yeah I think it's also worth mentioning this is a dish that you can find everywhere from like budget eateries to like top-notch restaurants so if you want to try it you don't necessarily have to pay a lot for it like yeah. you can find this anywhere in Brazil I mean yeah. it is a national dish right yes right. <laughs> so try it anywhere uh, and for whatever budget you have yeah